The Cthulhu? Welcome to the next edition of Nerds of the Round. Uh, smaller session today. It's just going to be me, Brian. Me, Josh. And me, Eric. We're all cavemen. Yes. Me. <laughs> Raw meat. <laughs> Answer questions. <laughs> me cannot read. Uh, so this is, of course, the show where we take the topics that you guys have submitted and talk about them and all this cool stuff and give you our points of view and hopefully uh, quench your thirst for knowledge. Uh, it's going to be a special edition. Uh, Eric, of course, is joining us again from uh, $3 Bill. And uh, today what we're going to do is we are going to pick our questions, and at the end we'll kind of take a, a moment to reflect on all of them. And we'll let Eric pick the winner, and the winner will be sent this here from his own collection. Uh, got a, a bit more questions this time around because we were at the uh, Ekman's Toy Show in New Braunfels this weekend so uh lots of new random topics from different walks of life and uh different cultures so i'm pretty excited to dive in uh so let's get started this one here it's all super crunched up all right uh this comes from chris navarro uh is actually one that we reviewed his comic book on not too long ago um so, question is, is debate. Independent comic book publishing, uh, print versus online. Uh, this is going to be a big one for Eric, um, <laughs> simply because I guess he's kind of lucky. <laughs> but uh, me, honestly, like, just on a business level, or, a, you know, uh, a level that, you know, of exposure, I would always think online, because that's everywhere. Online is, is probably the best way to go when you're trying to start an independent comic because um, when you when you put stuff online, you can put stuff on like Comixology and stuff. They're like the apps that you can read comic books on. And if you put them on there, it's free to put on there and you can make people pay 99 cents to download it. So that is 100% profit because you're not printing. No printing costs. Yeah. yeah. So when you do that, it's a very good way to actually make money to pay for your prints later. So it's always good to start online. You want to have a huge online presence because it's the best way to, you know, be seen. If you go to conventions, it's cool to go to conventions and everything, but you're you're going to be seen by it what feels like a lot of people, but in the end it's like 50 or 60 people maybe that sh took real interest in your stuff and it's not spreading the word as much as the internet would. So digital comics is really a good way to go in the beginning and then you can eventually start to turn around and do print comics. We're actually, the first issue and a preview issue of my comic, uh, The Last Ironheart, we're going to do a print issue of that, but we're doing that just because we're going to, you know, pass them out at Alamo City Comic Con, so it's more of kind of like a flyer kind of thing. People have something to hold and read and stuff like that, but we're definitely going to put them out in digital versions because I think it's, like I said, it's 100% profit. There's no money that goes into that, so. Yeah. yeah. I'm not... I'm not a huge comic uh, reader, but I mean, for me, I think it'd be a case of why not both, you know, after mm -hmm. you get the money to start printing them, you know, there are people who prefer to have the hand copy. That's why not everybody's bought a, a Nook, you know, some mm -hmm. people like to read books, some people like to read comics and have the physical hand copy in their hand. And at the same time, you know, I can totally see the value of an online distribution as well. Like it's much cheaper, obviously, for maintenance, you only have to pay for a little bit of hosting costs and everybody in the world can come to your site and see your stuff. Yeah, it's it's very expensive to print comics. We've been <laughs> we've been looking into that, and there's just I mean, there's you can get stuff really cheaply done in China, but <laughs> it takes a long time to get to you. And if there's anything wrong with it, and you have to send it back, there's a long time between getting it back. So, it's a it it's definitely easier to do do it online. And I mean, but like you said, a lot of people like to actually have it. And, Especially if you're like, oh, this is a special edition, and they're just like, yes, I need it. So, mm -hmm. uh, I could vouch for that. Like, <laughs> if you look at like, if you could see like my Walking Dead's, they're all the hardback. Uh, I didn't get, I didn't really get into the paper ones as much, so I've been just grabbing the hardbacks and 
holding on to those. Even the compendiums, those are just too big for me, and they're also paper. If it's a hardback, I'm all over it. Like, I really, really like hardback stuff, so, um, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, like, again, being that I'm doing all of this online, I had my first show, if you will, uh, was Saturday, and it is. It's a lot of, like, I didn't realize I was going to be so tired. Mm -hmm. um, so just having an online community, you know, just kind of, not a lot of people came, like, people who are, like, on Facebook or stuff like that, because you guys are pretty spar sparse and out there. Um, we didn't have a lot of people who were like, hey, you know, I watch your show. It's a lot of new people. So, uh, and it was weird saying I don't have anything physically <laughs> to, <laughs> to enjoy. We're, we're an online show. Yeah. <laughs> so I did, I had the shows running and stuff, but, um, but yeah, I didn't have, like, besides the cards and stuff, I was like, here you go. <laughs> so, so that was, that's, I think, the takeaway, the physical bit is what, you know, is is something that helps them remember but uh, that, in, but for stuff like this, you know, that intangible, you gotta hope they have a really good memory. <laughs> and there's people who like to spend less on, like they don't like to spend the three fifty or whatever that it costs to buy a comic book. Mm -hmm. When you can either read it for free online, like my web comic, but that's just because it's you know it's individual strips. Um, but if you're putting out a full book, you could sell it for like ninety nine cents or a dollar or something like that online, and um, people will be like, yeah, that's, uh, I'll read it for that much. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's cheap. So, yeah, people can be cheap. <laughs> cheap, cheap. Right, go ahead. Next one. Gosh. Thank you again, by the way, Mr. Navarro, for that question. So I really do very much shuffle in there. Let's see what we got. This is from uh, Mary Nance. Uh, why does Storm have so many names? <laughs> Well, I mean, is it, it's I guess it's a lot of that re that whole rebirth kind of thing. Yeah, you know, she's totally Storm, but she was always uh, name just ran out of my head. But but I think <laughs> it was a lot of it was just you know she was identifying with her African roots and and stuff like that. So she would she would go revert back, but she was always Storm. Yeah, and, it's and, like repackaging the same thing. Yeah, yeah. and it's. You gotta remember, like, when Stan Lee started writing the X-Men, you know, and, and stuff like that. It was, he wasn't so involved in, like, so her, you know, that the whole backstory, her African backstory and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. You know, that all came later as society became more advanced, I guess, you know, storylines became more advanced. And he wanted to, when it started, it was like, it's Storm, that's easy, she <laughs> controls the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Done, you know. Her name is Storm. <laughs> And she controls the weather. <laughs> <laughs> and she can make more than just storms. Because, you know, yeah. so it's not so clever. But, <sighs> storm is a very general, it's a very blanket But it's a cool name. name. Yeah. It's a, but it, it's more cool than, like, I make clouds disappear, I make sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> weather lady. Weather lady. <laughs> the meteorologist. <laughs> uh, you know, and you see that, like, Cyclops, it looks like he has one eye. Yeah. Like, so, when, I think when Stanley started this, it was very just, like, not to mention the fact he loves alliteration, mm -hmm. but with their actual names, Reed Richards, mm -hmm. and so forth and so on, uh, I think that just her names just came from, like you were saying, like a repackaging of, of that character, and when they started doing origin stories and stuff like that, it was like, well, it makes sense, you know, cause, yeah, because of the character she always was. always reverts back to Storm being storm she, yeah. she'll end up being storm again eventually if she changes in the comics you're just like eh, yeah don't like I mean, that <laughs> you know what i mean it's really something where like the the comics have had a long time to evolve and you've seen all the characters go through different stages as they go through because i mean how else are they going to keep a story interesting you know yeah. if there's no development in a character then there's nothing to keep you engaged yeah. and they all have names they just have code names to protect their identities <laughs> It's just when we find them out is the question. <laughs> you got it. All right, Mary, let's see what we got. This one is from Cat Chasey? Chassie, I guess that is. I think it's mm -hmm. Chassie. Chassie. Yeah. Okay. Two S's. Please explain anime slash game boob physics. Oh, <laughs> wow. Wow. We did get this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 
Uh, <laughs> I was actually so, talking about this the other day, so it's kind of funny. We, we were talking about this just before we started filming. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, like, from what it says, it's explain it. Well, I don't know if you've ever seen boobs, but they bounce around. <laughs> so that's, that's what phys the boob physics comes from. Unless you have a good sports bra. Yeah, yeah. unless you have a good sports bra. <laughs> yeah. um, Even then, you're, it's kind of a crapshoot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I think a lot of it, and Frankie's asked me this before, and when I first started getting her like looking at anime and stuff, and like some of the stuff that happens, it comes down to fan service. Like, it's what they want to see. And so while an anime can be super serious and, you know, there's going to be that moment where it's like, bink, and it's like, there, I did it for you. Now yeah. everybody leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, even like, uh, like we were watching Kill a Kill. Uh-huh. Oh, well, yeah. And, <laughs> it's uh, all about that. It's an entirely show. Well, <laughs> well, not only that, but like, uh, we were talking about just like how over the top, you know, everything is like when they're like chasing her to give her her, her suit, her uniform yeah. and whatnot. And every time, like, they, like, see her, like, something happens in, like, her underwear shows and they, like, bleed from the nose. Yeah. Like, it's, like, it's all just part of it's, that over-the-top comedic All this like, stuff comedic is, they're timing. caricatures of reality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, like, well, women have boobs and they bounce around, so let's make them bounce around like crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's not, like, and, and there's, it, it happens, you know, and I'm, like, okay, well, whatever, it's fine if you see a, a character in a video game that has, you know, is moving and her boobs are moving around is because that's how they work mm -hmm. but if you play a game like what is it dead or live beach volleyball where they where, stop moving and they keep yeah, bouncing they, they for the next like moving, 45 yeah, and seconds and you're just like what is going on there that's, there's something <laughs> wrong um but yeah and it's definitely a big controversial thing like we were talking about before the new mmo wildstar that just came out uh during the beta people were complaining about the size and also the boob physics so they actually took them out so i think that i mean i really don't care you know i don't play video games because i want to be like ooh boobies you know <laughs> like that's not the deal but it does seem kind of strange to me when you see like a character running and she has boobs and they're not moving at all but then you know they're like oh she's wearing a sports bra so <laughs> yeah but like you said it's definitely it's for guys who want to see that it's all that's what it is or, yeah, it's, you know. it's honestly like you think about it like in an mmo standpoint really shouldn't matter you know why because you see the back of your head yeah, yeah. 95% yeah. of the time. Even yeah. in Wildstar, where there's something with like the aiming mechanic and the camera mechanic, still it's behind still behind him 95% yeah. of the time. So that's kind of a silly argument. I think it was kind of a silly argument, but whatever makes people happy. I mean, uh, yeah, and I mean, it does have a... Uh, <laughs> it does have a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a pervy side. You know, there are guys that are going to play those games and... And like yep. <laughs> log in, face their character, and make them jump. For well, there's minutes. a there's an MMO that I, I can't remember the name of it, but it is that's all it is. You can't play male characters in the game. They're all female, and they all have just like their armor is just nothing. <laughs> and it's the whole point of the game. And it's like you look at this game and you're like, that's what this game is for. Why do they even have quests and stuff? You know, that's why people play this game. Mm -hmm. And it's an it's a legit MMO. I think it co it doesn't cost money or anything, but I really can't remember the name. I think I like watched a youtube video that somebody was talking about ridiculous boob physics and stuff and mm. that's one of the things that was in there but yeah and on boob physics we also had uh, a new physics born which was mustache physics mario got mustache physics for mario kart oh. <laughs> <laughs> his, his awesome. mustache blows in the wind i find that offensive <laughs> I can't, that, that needs to come out of video games <laughs> We're just going to talk for the rest of the show. Because <laughs> no, none of us stop understand. Stop looking at my mustache. Yeah. My eyes are up here. <laughs> Slightly. I can't really tell the difference. Like, <laughs> you are looking you, at my mustache, I right? think you were looking at my mustache. Mm. I see you there. Uh, yeah, and then... Uh, I saw somewhere... There's a game out there somewhere that has, like, dick physics. And I can't remember for the life of me what it was. Wow. Why? What would they be wearing that you would actually be able to see... Something like that, right? Yeah. I don't know, but I, remember, to be <laughs> I, I, I know there's, and I will probably put it somewhere down on the bottom once I <laughs> edit this, and I'll, I will tell you what game it is, because I know it's out there. I saw it on the internet somewhere. It's a very strange thing. But it's really weird. Um, so, let's go for one more. Make it an even four, since we're missing one person today. Mm -hmm. oh, I got two. 
Ooh, this is an older one. Oh, we were talking about this the other day too. <laughs> Favorite soundtrack or score? Oh uh, yeah. Video games or and movies, so either or, I guess, mm. or both. Um, that's tough. I I really I I'm I'm a huge like Jeremy Sewell fan. So you got Skyrim. Uh, he did work on uh, Mist of Pandaria, and he did work on Guild Wars Two. So like that guy for me is like. Like, so those three are like anything he composed, I'm like all about. And he's doing his own symphony right now, mm -hmm. called the Northerner that he did through Kickstarter. Oh wow! And, um, and so I'm really super excited about that. So those like, like overall, I think like, are really good for me. Um, I don't think I could stray away from John Williams for yeah. soundtrack. Like <laughs> that or John like Williams. John Williams. John Will John Williams and Danny Elfman are going to be your go-to. Like, like the top five grossing movies ever, all John Williams. <laughs> yeah, he set the like best best selling soundtrack, and then he beat himself, and then the next one was beat himself. himself. Again. <laughs> it was him for a while, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm like aside from obviously John Williams, you can't go wrong with that. I'm really partial to uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula soundtrack. Oh yeah, it's really good. Yeah, um, that's we use it, that in D and D. Yeah, and I was gonna say, like, it's got a special like, place because like that's <laughs> that's the music that that's how we know like hey guys, the game's starting. We can hear the Dracula music going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's always it's a really good soundtrack, so I can you know see what we're gonna. Speaking of Dracula, have you seen the trailer for that new one? It looks really yeah. cool. I think it looks pretty cool. It looks, really cool. I, it looks like a really good action movie, but I'm not so sure it's gonna be a I good Dracula movie. Yeah, yeah, I hope they don't go too action movie. Like it, it can't be I Frankenstein, you know. <laughs> 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 no, don't go that route. Yeah, but. Um, for me, I think it's funny because you posted the, the other day the Chrono Trigger. Mm -hmm. Like, Chrono Trigger has amazing music, and I then those, yeah. it really does. Like, I just like <laughs> I was listening to that video that you posted. and I was just like, that's such an awesome rendition of it. Um, and then and Chrono Cross actually had really good music too. That's what I I had posted that as a, as a comment to what you were thinking. Like, Chrono Cross had some amazing music in it, and it's it's a game that wasn't like as not as well known as Chrono Trigger, obviously. A lot of times I'll just be like, oh, Chrono Cross, and people are like, oh, they had another game, and it's not really a sequel or anything, but it's like in the same kind of universe and stuff, but... It was so good. I really liked that game, It was though. a great game. Yeah, I... But the overworld theme in that game, it's Beyond, or, or like Dream, the... Dream of Another Shore, or something like that. I would actually just go walk out into the overworld and just let my character stand there, and I would just, like, in my room, and I'd just, like, go about my day just because I wanted to listen to that song. Yeah. Because it's, like, it, this it's amazing. This was before... Napster. And, uh, yeah, I know. That so, was on the place. So we had to have our own <laughs> special ways to hear our music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Recording it on cassette. Not cassette even just the yeah. overworld. What was the overworld theme? The same music they used for the that little like intro clip before the. No, that was a like, different one. Strip. That was a different one. But that was a really good one too. And you would be you would think that there would be more people who knew Chrono Cross simply because uh, when Chrono Cross came out, they put out that two disc set. Mm -hmm. which was Chrono Trigger, where they added the yeah, anime-style scenes Chrono to Cross it, one. and it had Chrono Cross 2. So you would think that more of the fans would have yeah, had made that like connection, but it's not. It's very, very, it's like, It's not as well-known as it should be. Yeah, but uh, definitely. Uh, if I went, like, video game-wise, I guess mm. I Guild Wars and all that, but... Uh, like, uh, Final Fantasy music also, too, is really good. Like, especially if you've ever listened oh, to, like, yeah. any of the orchestral versions of it. Like, One Winged Angel seen. with, like, a full <laughs> choir and orchestra sounds amazing. Final Fantasy VI, they had, like, really awesome music for, like, yeah. it's just MIDI music and everything. But, like, I remember the, the, uh, the orchestra, like, the opera scene mm -hmm. in that. And I was, like, it's, you know, a little kid playing this. And it's just... <laughs> <laughs> and you're like having to read the words and I'm just like it's beautiful <laughs> it was really awesome and then the ultra is just to come in and ruin everything yeah, yeah. Ruin. that jerk ruin everything um, and even Blizzard like World of Warcraft had had some really good uh, scores I've bought the collector editions for all the while mm -hmm. so they always came with the soundtrack yeah, so, so I've kind of had to hold for a while um Uncharted was had another had a really good score for it too. Um, I'm really impressed by Wildstar's music. I don't know if yeah, you've been playing. To it. I today or last night I was like yeah. I was like running and I was like wait I should, 
Wait, yeah, this is really, it's good. really cool. Just, like, just there's this because it's you know it's futuristic and stuff. So there's this zone that I'm in right now, and it has like this dubstep sounding stuff that just <laughs> it just goes, boom, 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 and then it goes into the music, and I was like, that's really cool. Like, it just sounds awesome. But yeah, they did a really good job on the soundtrack for that game. Yeah. Oh, Howard Shore. How could you forget Howard Shore? Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah. 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 I was just like <laughs> sitting here yeah. and I was like, huh. oh, oh yeah. And like we said, Danny Elfman, who did Hellboy and, and those, and the like of those. But yeah, so uh, I think, I don't know, I just feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> Probably. Uh, the last, I would say the last three question. or four Zeldas have been pretty powerful too. Like the uh, Link to the Past and stuff, and even Link Between Worlds mm -hmm. had the iconic music. Yeah. But like the last couple of generations, like Twilight Princess, uh, and Skyward Sword and stuff like that. They had the, the bigger, more the bigger epic music. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I'm just like walking and it's like uh, Wind Waker, you know. Yeah, Wind you know, Waker had great music. Like just like I'm just like da -na -na -na. I know, and I'm like oh wow, out of nowhere. But yeah, so. all right. So I guess we'll uh, we'll tie it up there with these four. And it's... since it's Eric's piece of art, I'm gonna let him pick. Who's the winner? Does this have a name on it? I'll have to look. That's one of the older ones. I'll have to look it up. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll go with the music one. Video game music. Yeah, okay, so video game music. Like I said, I'll have to... That's one of the older questions, so I'll have to uh, dig back and find out who was the one who submitted that to me. But I will uh, contact you via Facebook and or wherever you sent it to me at. And we'll uh, we'll get that sent out to you as soon as possible. Enjoy. Uh, I thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, uh, you can go to facebook.com/strictlynerd to see what else we've got going on there, uh, or at the Twitter, the Twitter, because I'm now over I'm over 29, <laughs> so I have to put Twitter the article in front of everything. Maybe the Facebook. Uh, the Twitter or the Facebook, but Twitter at Strictly Nerd. Uh, we do also have our. Our website, www.strictlynerd.com. Uh, and then Eric will plug for uh, him. $3 bill, my webcomic. It's really funny, some people tell me. Uh, 3db.com.com. 3db.com.com. Because it was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you. Again, I'm Brian. I'm Josh. And me, Eric. 